YouTube, how's it going? Welcome back to Bananas Epic Gaming, and today in Bananas Epic Gaming, we are back with another episode of Cage Talk. Now, on this episode of Cage Talk, we're going to be ranking Phase 1 of the MCU. I figured since the Multiverse Saga will be over in a few years, if everything goes well, and nothing gets delayed again, I'm going to rank Phase 1 through 6. So I'm going to be doing the individual phases, give my own ranking video to lead up to that big one. Because that big one, I'm going to do Iron Man all the way to Secret Wars. And since Tobey Maguire is Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, and the X-Men are canon now, so to speak, they will be in the ranking as well. Please be sure to like and subscribe, tap the little bell on my YouTube app so you guys never miss an upload. And let's get into the MCU ranking of Phase 1. Coming in in last place will be The Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk is the only MCU Incredible Hulk movie so far. And in my opinion, this is one of the worst MCU movies, hands down. Easily top 10 of across all Marvel movies. I was disappointed with Ang Lee's Incredible Hulk when I found out they were making another one as a requel, a sequel, slash reboot. I was iffy. Edwin Norton did the best job he could. I have no problem with character-driven superhero comic book movies, but the expense of deepening the character's per person, it lacks good comic book action the fans have grown to love. Now that the Marvel Studios has the rights to the Incredible Hulk property again, I hope we get a good Mark Ruffalo Hulk movie, because the Incredible Hulk deserves some love, and like more screen time, because he's only gotten screen time from the Avenger movies, Thor Ragnarok, and this movie. Now on to the next movie. Coming up next will be Thor 1. Now, the original Thor, it, to me, is the worst or second worst Thor movie in the four movies that he has. Some people say it's the worst, but I think Thor 2 is worse. Uh, they did great casting. Chris Hemsworth is fantastic. Now, the important is James Foster. Tom Harrison, Anthony Hopkins, amazing. He Heimdall is great casting as well. Idris Elba. But this is the second worst movie in the early days of the MCU. It is decently written. It has a great score. With the actors that they have in this movie, it should be great acting. But Thor, to me, is the weakest. Yes, it is an origin story. But I feel like they could have done better in the long run. Because this rewatch value for the original Thor is not there. And luckily, that's in the beginning. And then you get to... Captain America and Heart and so on. They don't have another bad movie for a while. Well, I wouldn't say a while, but because Iron Man three and Thor two were bad. But Thor one is a decent movie. Loki is the villain, and he's also the villain in Avengers. So it is bad. So it continues on, and we get to see the origin of Thor. I know I've said that a lot, but they make it very well known this is an origin movie. Now on to the next movie. Coming up next is going to be Iron Man 2. Now, Iron Man 2 isn't as good as the first, but it's still a lot of fun. There's twice as much action, twice as much jokes, and introduces us some fan favorites people because people love War Machine and then we get uh, Black Widow in this movie as well Scarlett Johansson and this is Terrence Howard's last 
movie as Rhodey, aka War Machine, because he gets recasted by Don Shido. And I think that was the right call, because Don is War Machine. Now, the story is alright, pretty believable. Mickey York as Whiplash is pretty decent character. I would like to see them maybe try to give more repercussions to this now that it's been a long time since this happened. Maybe in Armor Wars that's coming out sometime in the near future. Maybe like mention this and mention everything that's happened because this is Don's first solo movie as one machine. And I think that all the repercussions and everything that happened in the Iron Man's Infinity War and Game Sequel Invasion is going to affect his movie. But all in all, Iron Man 2 is a decent movie, it's not the best. It's not the best Iron Man movie by far, but it is a pretty good Iron Man movie. I like it. Now, coming up next is the movie that started it all, Iron Man. Now, Iron Man, this one you can easily flip-flop with uh, the first Avenger, and maybe uh, the first Avengers team-up movie. Captain America the First Avenger and the Avengers I like more personally but I think this is a terrific movie overall top to bottom this started the MCU they took a chance on Iron Man with Robert Downey Jr. and it paid off because now the MCU is arguably the best comic book universe movie that is out right now and they may ever be out because I don't see DC topping the, what the MCU has done in the past decade plus as of this recording we know that we are more than likely going to be getting uh, the villain's son in Armor Wars I'm interested in that because now it's gonna come back full circle, kind of. Because, spoiler alert, Tony's not here anymore. He dies in Endgame. And War Machine, who's played by Don Shiddle now, who was played by Terrence Howard in the first two Iron Man, he's gonna fill the shoes for the Iron Man. And I think we will get another Iron Man, like a recasting Iron Man from another universe that way we still have Tony Stark now on to the next movie now the next movie is a close one it is going to be Captain America the first Avenger now Captain America the first Avenger this one you could easily flip flop with the first Avengers movie but this is without a doubt one of the best origin superhero movies that I've seen especially in theaters Chris Evans I thought did a phenomenal job in this movie because he's coming off of playing Johnny Storm and the Fox is Fantastic Four and I think he was born to play Captain America and I don't want to see anybody else playing Steve Rogers as long as I'm alive because Chris Evans did such a phenomenal job in this role. The villain Red Skull in this movie is, without a doubt, one of the better slash underutilized villains that they've had. Now, if we could maybe bring him back where it makes sense, I would be all for it. Because if you watch Avengers Endgame, you know what happens to Captain America, Steve Rogers at the end. Now on to the next movie, and the next movie obviously is The Avengers. Now, Marvel's The Avengers 
when this came out, this was a big deal in 2012. This was the first superhero team up movie, and people thought it wouldn't be good. People thought that they rushed into it. I went into this with medium expectations, and this movie succeeded all my expectations. Marvel did a fantastic job with the villain, and this movie is low key. We got Thor, we got Iron Man, Black Widow, Hawkeye, Captain America, and the Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk got recasted, and it is Mark Ruffalo now, and he's still playing the Hulk to this day. I think that Marvel struck gold and got the iron hot for the superhero movie franchise, and they haven't looked back since. I can't wait to see what they do, to continue to do for the next... 10, 20 years because I love these movies and then we get the little Thanos tease at the end of the movie as a post credit scene that was beautiful I want to say thank you guys for watching please be sure to like and subscribe tap a little bell on the YouTube app so you guys never miss an upload and we will be doing phases 2, phases 3 and phases 4 and when they finish releasing phase 5, phase 5 as long as everything goes to plan, and phase 6 as well. And then after we do all of those phases, we will be doing a Marvel MCU movie ranking, and ranking all the movies, including the Fox's X-Men and the Fox's Fantastic Four, because I'm pretty sure those are going to be canon now, now that they are exploring the multiverse. So, be on the lookout for those. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Tap a little bell on the YouTube app so you guys never miss an upload. And I'll see you guys on the next one.